everyone. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about Gaussian mixture models in machine learning. A Gaussian mixture model is a soft clustering technique used in unsupervised learning to determine the probability that a given data point belongs to a particular cluster. Here, instead of assuming that the data is coming from a single Gaussian distribution, we assume that it is generated by a mixture of k Gaussian distributions, each with its own mean and covariance. This model tries to find the parameters, namely mean, covariance and mixing coefficients of these Gaussian distributions that best explains the observed data. This diagram illustrates the concept of Gaussian mixture models. Here we can see that there are three Gaussian functions, that is brown, green and blue, hence k is equal to 3, and each Gaussian explains the data contained in each of the three clusters available, that is cluster 1, cluster 2 and cluster 3. Here we can also see that each Gaussian component is having its own mean and covariance which is expressed as mu1 sigma1, mu2 sigma2 and mu3 sigma3 respectively. So we can say that all the data points which is belonging to the cluster 1 can come under this Gaussian component and cluster 2 can come under this Gaussian component and cluster 3 can come under this particular Gaussian component. But the data points which is lying in this range it can either belong to cluster 1 or cluster 2 because both cluster 1's Gaussian component and cluster 2's Gaussian components are overlapping here. In the same way here in this range we can say that it can either belong to this cluster 2 or cluster 3. So from this diagram we can understand that the data is not coming from a single Gaussian distribution but it is generated by mixture of the K Gaussian distributions. Now let us see the formal representation of Gaussian mixture distribution which can be written as P of X is equal to summation of K is equal to 1 to K pi K into normal distribution of X given mu K comma sigma K. Here P of X is the overall probability density function for a data point X. In the right side the expression is the weighted sum of K Gaussian components. So here summation of K is equal to 1 to K means it represents K Gaussian components and pi k is the mixing coefficient for the kth Gaussian. It indicates the probability of a data point belonging to the kth cluster whose sum of all values will be equal to 1 as mentioned here that is summation of k is equal to 1 to k pi k is equal to 1. That means the value of pi k will be ranging from 0 to 1. This function also indicates how big or small the Gaussian function will be. And this normal distribution is the probability density function of a Gaussian distribution which is having the mean mu k and covariance matrix sigma k. In the context of GMM, we know that each data point x is assumed to be generated by one of the k Gaussian distributions. So to know what is the probability that a data point xn is coming from the Gaussian component k, we can express it as P of Znk is equal to 1 given Xn. That means given the data point Xn, what is the probability that it is belonging to the kth Gaussian component which is expressed as Znk is equal to 1. Here Z is the latent variable which takes only two possible values. It is 1 when X is coming from the particular Gaussian component. Otherwise it will become 0. We can also state this as pi k is equal to P of Zk is equal to 1 which means that the overall probability of observing a point that comes from the Gaussian k that is the right hand side is actually equivalent to the mixing coefficient which is left hand side for that particular Gaussian. This makes sense because pi k indicates how bigger or smaller the Gaussian is. So the bigger the Gaussian is the higher we would expect this probability to be. Now let Z be the set of all possible latent variables which can be expressed as Z is equal to Z1 to Zk. We know that each Z occurs independently of others and they can only take the value of 1 when K is equal to the cluster the point comes from. Therefore we can express this Z as P of Z is equal to P of Z1 is equal to 1 whole power Z1 into P of Z2 is equal to 1 whole power Z2 up to P of Zk is equal to 1 whole power Zk which can be expressed in short as product of K is equal to 1 to K 
pi k whole power z k. So whenever the exponent z k is 1, then it indicates that the particular data point is having the high probability that it belongs to a particular Gaussian k. To find the probability of observing our data given that it came from the Gaussian k, following the same logic we used to define p of z, we can state p of x n given z, that is given the Gaussian component k, what is the probability that x n belongs to that particular Gaussian k. So this can be written as product of k is equal to 1 to k, normal distribution of x n given mu k comma sigma k whole power z k. But our initial aim is to determine the probability of z given our observation x, not x n given z. So from the product rule of probabilities, we can write p of x n comma z as p of x n given z into p of z. So this is what we have derived now that is p of z and p of x n given z. But we need to find p of x n not p of x n comma z. So we have to get rid of this particular z. So to get rid of this z we can marginalize this equation. Marginalizing means we have to either perform integration or summation. So if it is uh, discrete data we have to perform the summation. So here z is discrete value. So let us apply summation. So we can write p of x n is equal to summation of k is equal to 1 to k p of x n given z into p of z which in turn can be written as summation of k is equal to 1 to k. So for p of z we can substitute pi k and p of x n given z can be expressed as normal distribution of x n given mu k comma sigma k. So to find the probability of z given x we can use the Bayes rule. Bayes rule can be formally expressed as p of a given b is equal to p of b given a into p of a divided by p of b where the denominator p of b is the marginal probability. Here we assume that zk is equal to 1 as a and xn as b. So we can express it as p of xn given zk is equal to 1 into p of zk is equal to 1 divided by p of xn which can be expressed like this as shown in our previous slide. So from our earlier derivations, we know that p of zk is equal to 1 can be expressed as pi k, p of xn given zk is equal to 1 can be expressed as the normal distribution and p of xn can be expressed as the marginal distribution that is summation of k is equal to 1 to k pi k into normal distribution of xn given mu k comma sigma k. So now let us replace this with this equation. So we get from this the gamma of z and k. Here we weave the pi k as the prior probability of z k is equal to 1 because initially we don't know the values for z so we assume it so it is called as prior probability and once the data is being observed then we can find the posterior probability that is gamma of z and k. So gamma of z and k is the corresponding posterior probability which we determine once we observe the data x. This gamma of z and k can also be viewed as the responsibility that the component k takes for explaining the observation x. Now let us understand the concept of Gaussian mixture models using these plots. So we have three plots a, b and c. In the plot a we have the joint distribution p of z into p of x given z. This is called as the prior probability where the three states of z corresponds to three components of the mixture. The samples are represented in three colors namely red, green and blue. Each color represents one state of z and this data set is referred to as complete because we are assuming the values of z and it is known. Next in the plot b we have the marginal distribution p of x. Here we are ignoring the values of z and just plotting the x values. So all the values are shown in magenta without distinguishing between the different components of the picture. This data set is called as incomplete data because the values of z are not known here. Next in the plot c it is called the posterior probability. This shows the samples but the colors represents the responsibilities gamma of z and k associated with each data point xn. This is achieved by plotting each point using a mix of red, green and blue colors where the proportion corresponds to the responsibilities gamma of z and k for k is equal to 1 to 3 respectively. Here this colors visually indicate the degree of association of each point with each of the three mixture components. So all these components are 
belonging to red cluster and this points belong to green cluster and uh, this one belongs to blue cluster but in the overlapping regions we can see that it is a mix of red and green so it can have either the property of belonging to red or green in the same way here it belongs to either blue or green so it is the mix of blue and green color so thus we have seen about the gaussian mixture models and its working in this lecture thank you